Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and today I would be talking about why I think you should relocate abroad as a young person if you want to. Of course, I'm not saying everyone should, but if you want to relocate abroad, why you should do it early and basically why I decided to move and I have with me here, Ade Inka, we'll be talking about our own story, why we decided to move and you're going to have a good time in this video so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up of course subscribe to my channel check out my other videos and let's get right into it so we're going to start with adenka why did you decide to leave nigeria <laughs> there is suffering in the land i mean apart from that i actually left immediately after nysc so i just really wanted a different environment and maybe it's a ch uh, an environment that is quite challenging and also, I mean, everybody knows how it is in Nigeria and the kind of anxiety that you have as um, someone that is just concluding their NYSE. I was thinking about my next move and I was considering my master's. Even if I did not travel, I would have equally just done it in Nigeria. And I was also looking outside of the country. So it was basically because of my education. And yeah, that is the reason why I left. If you left because of education now, when I was moving out of Nigeria, I currently live in Canada though. So when I was moving out of Nigeria, typically they ask us to write something called a statement of purpose, right? And in the statement of purpose, we always have to write something like, when I'm done studying in Canada, I would take the knowledge I've gotten and then return back to my own country to go and use that knowledge to improve the country. So you said you went, you, you went abroad to study. So do you think you want to go back to Nigeria to go and use your knowledge? <laughs> To improve your country but we see now <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so for me when i was going to move abroad um in 2022 one of the things that really prompted me was um an incident that happened in 2019 so on this fateful day i was driving back to school from my home i was driving my mom's car it was a very old sienna and as i was driving back or uh, back to school then i saw this taxi chasing behind my car apparently it was like all this normal Ibadan taxi. I grew up and lived most of my life in Ibadan. And then, as I was going, these guys kept on chasing, chasing. I was actually thinking maybe they were robbers or kidnappers. Apparently, at some point, these guys pointed out guns and they were like, pack, 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 pack. And then, I pulled over. Apparently, it happened to be all the SaaS guys. Mm -hmm. And eventually, they told me to bring out my phone. They checked my phone. They said, oh, nothing. There was nothing. Apparently, I didn't even have money at that point, to be honest. So, Maybe I had like 3,000. And at that point, I was selling tie and dye shirts. So they checked my car, they saw tie and dye shirts, and they're like, ah, Masha, your woo. It's like, oh, don't do your woo. I was like, so why all of those stuff? So at that point, I just decided I was going to leave Nigeria, but I was still in school. So I just waited a bit more. I finished uni. Immediately I finished uni, I knew that I was leaving Nigeria. Whether I was going to move to Benin Republic, or dubai or anywhere i really didn't care i just wanted to leave nigeria anyhow so what would you say has been the the best thing that has happened to you since you moved like what what's like uh what how would i put it what's been like the differentiating factor for you since you moved like when you compare your life in nigeria to your life in germany um actually i would really say that there is credibility in their system and you know, like I said, I moved immediately after NYSC. There is this constant anxiety about will I get a job, will I not get a job? And I mean, depending on where you come from, I already know that I do not have a father or any mother that could help me speak to one director. Of course, I'm not really saying that people cannot just get jobs mm -hmm. like without any Connections. connection in Nigeria. Yeah. But I just really feel that the opportunity is not equal for everyone mm -hmm. so there is some sort of people that because of their connection they find it very very easy mm -hmm. than the others yeah. to find something so what has what, the differentiating factor like you said for me is the fact that the competition is open to everyone mm -hmm. over there and may the best man win oh, so yeah. if you have this level of confidence in yourself then i think the system is the best for you because everyone has equal opportunity mm -hmm. at least to a certain extent okay yeah interesting for me one of the biggest things that i learned after moving abroad is that life will actually humble mm. like a lot I of agree. people growing up in nigeria 
we used to think we're humble people of course not like we had money or anything but like somehow you just grow up like feeling like there's this classist mentality that the average nigerian actually grows up with like is this i better pass my neighbor kind of mentality right. so as we're growing up you know you wouldn't really know that that feeling or that trait was in you until you actually move abroad and like life would literally bring you to the ground no matter how much money you're coming with no matter what you had done before like it was as good as you were starting from scratch and when you go back or when you moved abroad and it was like you were starting from scratch how did you handle it because for a lot of people i know you moved um immediately you were done with nyc but whether you like it or not it was still a new place no friends no f okay maybe you had some family no experience germany you needed to learn the language right. how did you undo all of the transition <laughs> to be honest i will tell you that i am still handling it so it's it's like it's a journey it's not something that you figure out all at once and i would really also say that like you said it is humbling i absolutely agree with that statement because i think my first job was cleaning mm -hmm. yeah i want the I store want... <laughs> for people, for no. people that don't know, I worked as a sales boy in the store. In the store, but but I I think um, the thing is I was also very young, so I didn't really care. It mm -hmm. wasn't um, something that I was really worried about. So I don't know if you're like moving in your maybe early thirties. Yeah, would we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the age part because that's like the whole <laughs> overview of the video. But like you know, you said you did a, your first job as like a yeah. cleaner and all that. And I remember when I was going to move to Canada in 2022, right? I was already doing pretty well prior. And when I was moving, I was like, ah, I wouldn't even get a job or do anything. But upon getting there, like I said, life would humble you. And when I say life will humble you, it's not even about money sometimes. You just start feeling lost and you won't be able to integrate into the system well enough if you don't do certain things. So I quickly knew that I didn't want to be stuck in my Nigerian self. So I knew I'd lived in Nigeria all my life. And if I didn't get out of my shell, I'll end up still just being stuck in my Nigerian self. I wouldn't know how the system works and all of those things. So I decided to get a job. I got a job at Bulk Ban. Thank you, Kaylin, for hiring me. <laughs> and my job was um, a sales associate or no, store clerk slash cashier. That was my role. I did the job for about two months and it was pretty chilled. I learned a lot of things. And the day that humbled me the most on that job, there's this guy. He was in high school. So the guy comes in in the evening after school now. So he came in that day and then he told us, myself and Olu, uh, because like um, we worked a bulk man together to clean the floor. Like we were meant to do the clean that day. We were like, ah, see this small guy. You saw me with me when he talks to me with the clean floor. Like it was actually so, so funny. So you the one, really? <laughs> but then eventually we got past it and now we've like gone on to like do a lot more great things and we're like making great progress we've settled in like really well it feels like i've been living in canada all my life and it's been like a lot more exciting now i was going to now go to the part about the age now we've been in the uk currently we're making this video in the uk right and we've been in the uk for like the past few weeks and one of the things we've seen in this uk is the fact that um a lot of people who migrated as older people tend to be struggling with the old migration thing than the younger guys and there are a lot of factors to it first of all settlements so because when you move abroad people think the grass is greener on the other side but it's not exactly mm -hmm. like that you can be making good progress abroad self financially but sometimes because you don't even have a good immigration status you have to do anything you have to do to get by so you'd see people that are even are like professors, doctors, doing really well in their careers, having to literally start life all over again. So what would you say about people, if they really want to move, moving at a young age? Um, before, I was trying to say something about the cleaning. Yeah. So <clears throat> when the first apartment that I stayed in Germany, I think the person, the friend of the, um, of my, like, landlord slash subtenant has a cleaning company mm -hmm. so it, it wasn't because i was actively looking for like a, a cleaning job. job so i mean i'm new and then he called me they leave like very early in the morning because they have to like drive to like another city it's just, like in a neighboring town 
so they called me like around um 4 a.m i mean thankfully i'm a morning person i mean he already told me um a the day before bar. yeah that oh there's this job it's we have to like someone is moving out of a of um of our apartment i think she's she was a lady and they needed to like clean it they're like from the u.s the u.s military and all of that so it just called me and then i was like okay why not so we went there i think the only thing i did was clean the kitchen and then the windows that was it and guess how much they gave me just guess 100 euros 150 euros imagine <laughs> you know how many work you do in Nigeria to earn one fifty euros? No. You know, before, before you continue your story, like, how did you feel when you saw the one fifty euros? <laughs> I mean, I was I was happy, and the fact that it was cleaning, it didn't really matter anymore. <laughs> and that's one of the things I love about living abroad so much. It is the fact that there is so much dignity in, in labor, labor yeah. because no matter what you're doing. No one really cares, and that's why you see a lot of those guys. They work at the store, they do cleaning jobs, and they do it for 30 years, 40 years because these things help them get by. But in Nigeria, the people who do this type of jobs barely get paid, and of course, because they don't get paid well, everyone in the society like looks at them as like being net and yeah, because they are they are them. at the bottom of the food chain. Exactly. So there is the thing with um, living abroad or. I mean, the first um, world country. I mean, I don't really like to use that word, but anyways, I'm just really trying to say that countries that are like a whole that are that are more Much structured more and all of that. The someone that is a cleaner, you can aspire to be more because there is dignity in labor, and you can actually you have access to credit and all of those things, and you can actually redefine your life if you want. And that is why if you see people that are like doing those jobs, I mean, maybe like they are citizens, mm -hmm. that they are doing it with all their heart, it's because they just literally enjoy it. It's not because they cannot, um, they, there is no they room. They're actually pretty passionate Yeah, they, maybe there is no room for them to be much more than that. It's mm -hmm. because that is what they want. I want to be a cleaner. Yes, that is what I am doing. But in Nigeria, you see that a lot of people, they actually do have potentials, but they are unable to, because it's more like running around circle. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when it comes to like moving like abroad, one of the things that I am a very big advocate for is like moving early. Because, you know, when I was going to move abroad, like I said, proud to live in Nigeria, I was already making like very good money. I was doing pretty well. And one of the things, so I spoke to one of my mentors about like, Consider when I was considering the whole idea of moving abroad. To be fair, I already made the decision. So it wasn't like that helped me make the decision, but it kind of like solidified my decision. When I spoke to him, I was like, hey guy, you're moving at, let's say, I'm not going to tell you my age, <laughs> but let's say I was moving at 20. So he said, if you move now and you don't like it, let's say you live there for the next five years. You'd only be 25. If you don't like it, come back to Nigeria and you start life all over again. The average 25 year old, the average 30 year old in Nigeria doesn't, it does not even have like direction yet. So go there, get the experience, come back home. I right. Agree. And that just like kind of resonated for me. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to give it a try because at the end of the day, why not? What do I have to lose? Nothing. Yeah. Sometimes like even when I moved, it felt like I was beginning to like lag behind like what my friends, my colleagues were doing. But at the end of the day, you find out like it's actually not a race. So you still would end up catch up catching up with like those people and you still level up in life. So sometimes you're buying the experience and the experience can just be everything for you. Right. And you see that a lot of our politicians in Nigeria or even like a lot of the top business executives, these guys actually leave their brother at some point. Although I don't know what they use their own experience to do because they don't always develop the country <laughs> with their experience. Yeah. But they, they, they live that abroad and that's why somehow they are on top of the chain and they're able to like pass on the experience to other people. So would you recommend people move older or younger? I think it does not matter, to be you honest. You think so? It is better if you are young, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean if you are like, I don't know the definition of Of course, old. of course, of course, of like, course. There's is, never a limit to it. Yeah. So I don't really want to like, I don't want you to streamline um, it and yeah, say, don't, don't let, move don't, if you are older yeah, don't, don't let your age limit you in anything Actually, that you want very, to very, do very, 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 very good so point. if you think that you have a sense of purpose in the US, the UK or I don't know, you have, whatever thing that you want to do 
-hmm. you don't really need to put your age into consideration whether you like it or not another five years from now if you are 30 today you'll be 35 so, so and if you've not done it, it, it you will still be 35 in that ways exactly what, what would you say was the biggest culture shock for you when you moved abroad hey <laughs> this one is a very long story okay now, tell us about it let me um tell you about yeah like i said the first job that i did it was because i was with someone that was doing that kind mm -hmm, of thing mm -hmm. so the, the, i then i got a job at a restaurant okay so that was like the second or third thing that i was doing and it was like it, I, I work in the, at the kitchen and it was um like around late maybe like nine they were already like closed and we were doing the cleaning and then i went um upstairs to the closet and i was using my phone and someone came in and apparently she went i don't really want to go into details but the summary is that she went to call the manager and then they sacked me on spot i couldn't like you don't even you don't I, like right now i struggle to apologize to people like when i fuck up i don't like I, if i say sorry it's because i'm just like sorry about what i did to you it's not like i'm sorry that i want you to be um, considerate mm -hmm. if i have fucked up what next so then he said oh i should be going home that they've sacked me i was trying to apologize you know Nigeria now mm -hmm. ah, please <laughs> i still need this job and then he was like oh i'm going to call the police i'm like ah i'm sorry oh so so why, why do you think you were actually sacked just for pressing the phone um don't you think I mean, maybe that was racist or something I don't really like to attach racism to everything. I think the, the girl that went to call the manager must have said something in a certain way. But they should have at least interrogated you. I, I think I would I would really blame myself at the end of the day. If I had also just gone in, if I had yourself. gone in like maybe without my phone, it's just like when you go to the toilet or maybe you are supposed to use five minutes without your phone, five minutes. But when you go to the toilet with you your spend phone, 30 minutes it's like then. plus another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't with my phone, maybe I would have been like faster with whatever thing I was doing. But genuinely, I was using the toilet. So then maybe after I'm done, I would just go back to the kitchen. And that was something that was avoidable. So I take responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say it was um, a case of racism or something. Mm -hmm. So there have been racism if I had just gone and there was nothing uh, with me. And then maybe someone is telling me, then maybe someone is now telling me, Oh, I'm staying too long. Like, will I leave when I'm not done? So, but then I knew that, like, when the manager came, they, they, my phone was with me. So, I mean, like it was just a lost cause. So, yeah. yeah. So, I, I think my own biggest culture shock came, um, like, the first day we got to the airport at Canada. And then, like, um, I was waiting for the Uber to pick me up. And then we just, like, the Uber guy came and we got on the road. And everywhere just felt sane. Like, I still can't explain a lot of the things that happens there. I don't know how it happens. Like, I've been in the UK for, like, the last few weeks, like I said, and they drive, like, the way they drive in Nigeria. So, it feels weird. <laughs> Maybe they drive, like, mad people in some parts of Canada as well. I don't know. But, like, where I was, which was Bradford, I stayed in Bradford, like, a couple months. It was so, so sane. Like, you could walk. I started cycling. <laughs> I actually became a happier person. And then... The part that was now quite interesting was when we went to get a job. So myself and my friend, we kept on like submitting CV, CV, CV. And then that day we just got there and the manager was there and she's like, oh, she likes the print on my friend's shirt. And she's like, do you know the name of this person? And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Okay, go and check. We come back tomorrow. If you come back and you know it, I'll hire you. And then eventually <laughs> she hired easy. us. Of course, she already liked the vibe because we, we actually know how to interact pretty well. And then we got the job and like we started the job on the same day and it was just like very 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 amazing and since then and i think another thing was like like i said how humbling abroad is like the fact that when i moved abroad like i lived with my brother for like three four months thereabouts and like i learned a whole lot with him we had a lot of fun like it kind of just helped to build that bond as well better with him and it was just pretty pretty interesting for me and to be fair, like, I wouldn't have moved, like, any other time. I feel like if I had moved later, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. <laughs> and if I had maybe moved earlier, it wouldn't have been better as well. So, I think I just moved at the perfect time. And to be fair, if you're watching this video, you're in Nigeria or wherever you are, if you're considering relocating, to be fair, like, 
I recommend you do it 100%. The only thing you have to lose is nothing. You get to the experience and if for whatever reason you don't like, it, your home is your home. Go back home. Nothing to lose. No one's holding you back, right? So give it a shot. What do you have to say? Um, yeah, I also wanted to say something about the cultural shock. Okay. So, you know, I was like, once you fuck up, you just face your consequences. You know, in Nigeria, we are so used to maybe like people being considerate about your judgment and then you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you do it again, you are sorry. And then nobody's really like doing anything. Mm -hmm. They're not really um, strict mm -hmm. with the rules. So I think in Germany, I don't know about any other country, they're like so strict. And let's say you get on the train or on the bus without a ticket. You're sorry, cannot solve anything. Mm -hmm. You fucked up. Okay, just give me my fine. Let me be going. How much am I supposed to pay? <laughs> you know. You so know I just it's it's really felt like like can't you people can't you? I'm I am sorry now. <laughs> you oh, get sorry that you should not you should not have done that. Exactly. Your sorry does not solve the problem anymore. You know how we go to like the bus stops and like we just wait for the bus and everyone is just sin. But like ah. I, still, I miss the madness in Nigeria. I, have, I honestly cannot wait. No, 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 no. Nigeria is toxic. But Nigeria like, is was, toxic. It's actually so, so interesting. Like, you just go to the post and you're like, ah, <laughs> see, as this one's going to be like robots. Like, they actually <laughs> act like robots. Real time. Yeah, when we're because... Driving, when we're driving, you see everyone even, is sticking even, to even, the even, lane. Even the bus everyone, driver is a robot. There was this particular day. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you guys. I actually did Uber at some point as well. Mm -hmm. So there was this day I was doing Uber Eats. So... I was at this stop. You know how we drive in Nigeria like crazy people now. So it was still like my first few months in. So on that day, I was driving and then I went to deliver like uh, food at a certain place. So I was going to make this exit. I was at, at this exit. And then I wanted, you know, uh, like I can explain this best in Yoruba where you're like, <laughs> you bear no see, like you just move out a little bit so that the bus or like the car coming ahead will wait for you. You know, if you drive in Nigeria, you know. So once you do that, the car will wait for you and then you can Let now you make go. the exit, right? So as I was at that intersection, I could see the bus coming. So I did my Ninja instinct and I was like, I was going to wait a bit. You were going but to Benesi. I already, I already <laughs> even Benesi. Like I already put the, my mouth, like the, the, the front of my car there. Mm -hmm. And somehow my instinct was just like, just put your car on reverse. Like there was just this way. Like if I did not pull that reverse fast, that bus was going to crush me. Because in the real sense, he had the right of way and i should actually have waited That's so it. now the i rules. also drive like robots <laughs> like, i'm not even scared of having an accident anymore like i just know that of course i don't want to die or at least as, as long, long as, as i'm not dying as long as you know that you are doing the right I'm doing thing the right thing and i'm not dying <laughs> yeah. so there are some times where you know that okay uh, if this thing should happen like i can die mm -hmm. okay you calm down but like if i'm doing the right thing and there's no chance that i'm going to die i don't mind you actually eating my car right i just stick to the rules <laughs> drive by the rules of course we have a lot of crazy drivers as well i don't know how they get their licenses it's so annoying but either way it's like it's actually a very very interesting thing so what would you another, say about sorry 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 let me quickly say this another cultural shock for me is that i don't know my neighbors oh <laughs> i don't know my neighbors mm, okay maybe that would not apply to me so much because like when we lived in bradford we knew our neighbors and we used to even play with their dog and then when I moved to Ottawa, we know the guys living below our house. I know the guys living next door to the right, but I don't know the other guys living. Like, you but just you know, know it's, some it's, people. It's, it's, Not yeah, like we are friends, so. Exactly, but that is unusual from where we are coming from. Uh, I think it's because we were kids, too. Like, or like we grew Not up in there. Nigeria. Exactly. Like, mm, yeah, my parents. Have a point. Yeah, my, my parents knew our neighbors, but she wouldn't go to their house to go and be gisting with them. So we just knew ourselves, like, hello, hello. So. I think it's not that uh, deep, 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 deep like that. I just really feel like there is this idea of community in Nigeria that is not necessarily there. People say that a lot, but I, I tend not to agree. I think it's just like a lot of us don't integrate well enough. Like I said, I might be wrong. Maybe also I moved with my best friend. So kind of, uh, we also schooled. We had a bit of Nigerian guys in our class. So we have like a big circle of people that we play around, even like Prem. So my friend but from these Nigeria, are still Nigeria. That's what I'm saying. So like somehow it doesn't feel like there's no circle. So yeah, because there's the circle there either way. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still it's still pretty interesting. And I was going yeah, to Yeah, maybe the language barrier to in Germany is also contributing to that. Oh, so okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And for us in Canada, we speak English, English. So that that that's like been pretty helpful and 
Yeah, I think. Uh, what What else do you have to say? What other question do you have for what me? What other question do I have? <laughs> I think that's all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Of course, relocate if you want to relocate. If you don't want to relocate, it's fine to stay back home. Build Nigeria. You're the leader of tomorrow, and we're rooting for you. Let's make Nigeria great again. And <laughs> um, don't forget to give my video a thumbs up. Um, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.